always excited when the players get back in the building. But obviously very excited uh, to start year number two. And um, as I just mentioned, very excited to have our players back. You know, you start walking the halls just to see the guys and see their smiles, their faces. They're excited to be back. Um, uh, we're looking to improve uh, as a football team, compete, um, come in and do whatever we think it takes to, uh, to get this organization where it needs to be. Um, we understand. I, I'm very excited about the roster and where we are, but we all still know there's still work to be done that way. Uh, and I know we'll continue to push um, that way. But I think our, our players uh, coming off of OTAs and the way they competed, um, we're looking forward to the summer. I think we've had a great summer thus far. Um, and I think uh, our guys are glad to be back and glad to start this opportunity again. Where we at, excuse me, injury-wise, especially with uh, Garrett Coleman and a few of the others that were banged up in minicamp? I'm glad you were very healthy. I'm, I'm very excited about where we are. Obviously, Howard Wilson's the only guy, and he's on PUP. Outside of that, we're a very, very healthy football team. Is Miles ready to go? Miles is ready to go. going to get the first rep of quarterback and how are you going to kind of divide those? Yes, guys? I'm going to probably start this out just like we did in OTAs. Um, Cody will walk out there first and we'll give him an opportunity there. And, and obviously uh, Brock and Deshaun and Kevin, all those guys will get reps. I mean, this is a competition. Somebody has to walk out there first. Uh, we've made a decision it will be Cody and uh, we'll kind of go from there. Why Cody? Huh? Why Cody? Because he's still the guy who demonstrates uh, who knows the offense the best. Um, uh, he's the guy that's played the most football, you know, for us in that group, and I think he deserves a chance to walk out there first. How would you then characterize Kaiser's <laughs> progress um, through OTAs and, and the mini, mini camp? I think Deshaun did a good job. You know, he's a very talented player, uh, but he's still growing and still learning, and uh, we're looking forward to him competing, you know, here in training camp and see where he is. You know, as you guys know, um, all those guys are going to walk out there and compete uh, to play. Uh, and, and I know it's just we talk about Deshaun more than we do Brock and more than we do Kevin. But I think all four of those guys are going to have to have an opportunity to walk out there and compete because I think that's the right way, the right way to run this. So what type of expectations do you have for the team and what should the fans have? Yeah, go out and compete. As Hugh said, we're excited to be back. Uh, you know, I think that's the main thing. But we also know we have some work to do in our business. Our job here is to win games, a lot of games. And so, you know, we're we're not going to put a number of wins on a season. But we also understand that we've got to establish the way we work and prepare, and the wins will follow from that. I mean, coaching staff did an excellent job at reestablishing who we are as Cleveland Browns and what the expectations are. We're not lowering that. We talked about it upstairs. It's, our expectation is to go in and win 20 games this year. And that's exactly what we'll tell our guys. And that's the expectation they need to have for themselves. Actually, just a little bigger picture thing, but there was a pretty uh, in-depth study with retired players and brains that came out recently. 110 of 111 had you know, brain damage that could lead to dementia. Could you just address you know, where, where does the team stand on that, where, is the, where the league is, what your protections are in place, et cetera. And is it a safe game? You know, I wouldn't, you know, at this point delve into that. You know, I'm just not up to speed on it enough. I believe I saw an article or something like that scroll through, you know, a feed on notification on my phone, but I haven't read the article. So just respectfully wouldn't want to comment on it before I got the opportunity to read it. Sasha, what questions are you hoping when this, when this season is over? You know, I think we I think we will answer uh, several questions, and um, you know, I think importantly for us is again embedding kind of the way we go about things here and what we're about here as Cleveland Browns, and we're excited. We've got a lot of talented young players in our locker room. Our we've got a talented coaching staff uh, that's really committed to helping us return this organization. Uh, and get the city back to winning ways. Uh, and we talk about it all the time. We got an obligation to the men who wore this uniform before any of us were here. Uh, and we've got an obligation to the dog pound and the rest of the fans here in, in Northeast Ohio to establish a championship organization and club that Cleveland can be proud of. Uh, there will be a lot of underlying questions that point in that direction, but we want to be heading there. 
you have any shareable parts of stuff? So. No, I haven't, <laughs> but I will tonight. I'm really excited to address these men because, again, this is year two, and I think, um, but I will talk about, I don't like to talk about the past a lot, but I think we have to understand where we've been and where we're trying to get to and just how much work it's going to take to get there. You will run this quarterback competition in terms of, uh, you know, when we left minicamp, uh, Cody and Deshaun were kind of, you know, splitting time with the, with the first teamers. Will that continue? Do you anticipate, uh, you know, shaking it up pretty early in camp or kind of leaving it the way that it is for a while? You know, can you just kind of give us your mindset on the whole thing? Well, I think, Mary Kay, you have to kind of do that by feel. You know, I think, uh, like I said, Cody's going to walk out there first. Deshaun's going to get reps. Brock's going to get reps. Kevin's going to get reps. And then as we go through the process, we evaluate and see where we are. Um, I think, you know, there'll be markers as we go. There'll be data that we'll look at uh, to make uh, very uh, important decisions as we move forward. It could change. It could not change. I think that's all going to play out as we go through training camp. You, you have a team that's won four games in the last two years. And you know, obviously, you just have part of that. But, you know, you, wanted to, you got all these young guys, you want to develop them. But as you mentioned before, after a while, you know, going, you know, three and 13 and one, 15, this creates, I just think, a really a negative atmosphere. How do you break out of that and develop guys? You start winning. I mean, I think the young guys that you just mentioned, um, hopefully that we've stepped up and those guys have improved, and those guys are going to contribute to a winning opportunity this season. I think um, there's several guys who I think have truly improved. We've added more talent to our roster. We've drafted better talent on our roster. So that's why we feel good about having a better opportunity to win. And I get where you're coming from. Uh, but I think our players know that we're doing anything and everything we can to put the best product on the field to give us the best opportunity to win. Thank you. Um, following up on Pat's question, earlier this summer, Joe Thomas said that he's already experiencing some memory loss. Has he conveyed that to you at all? And if, if he has or hasn't, how concerning is it when you hear from a player and a guy like, like Joe, who means so much to you, to hear that he's dealing with some of that stuff already. Well, honestly, I, I've, I've heard bits and pieces of it, but we haven't really talked about it. Uh, if I know Joe, you know, Joe is, is, is Joe, and he's going to say what he feels and what he's dealt with. But I think Joe loves this game and, and what this game has done for him and what he's done for the game. So um, I'm sure we'll talk about it as we go a little bit. Is it concerning? I think we're always concerned about our players' safety and health. And that'll always be first and foremost. But at the same time, we'll do what we think is best. Just like Joe, I think we'll do what he thinks is best for him as well. Do you have to monitor here? here? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Joe. Do you have to monitor uh, Corny Coleman at all? He's had this hamstring um, history. Do you mm -hmm. have to monitor his practice time? Absolutely. We're going to monitor Corey and several of our players. I mean, we have a bunch of players who are returning off of injuries. Uh, I think Joe Sheehan, our medical staff, our strength conditioning staff, we've all, you know, convened together to talk about what's the best way to get our players through practice, have really good practices, and help our players improve. And part of improvement, you have to be out there practicing to improve. So I think we've come up with a really good plan, not for just Corey, but for several of our guys as we move forward to give them the best opportunity to compete and be a, be a huge part of practice in what we're doing. Memory loss. Does the team take any extra steps to say, hey, let's evaluate him, make sure, or is everything already in place? Yeah, if, if a player comes to us and, and makes any medical complaint, as Hugh said, we take that very seriously. Uh, so, uh, again, you know, we would keep those discussions in house, um, but uh, we would always take our, our players' health and safety and make that the first priority. Absolutely. Throughout the offseason, you've been pretty open in talking about Isaiah Crowell's role and how you felt last year. Maybe you should have used him a little more in that. Uh, as you get ramped up here for camp, have, have your thoughts changed at all? Uh, and, and where are you at as far as his situation goes, especially now that he's basically in a what is it, a contract here? Yeah, well, my, my feelings about him personally haven't changed. I think what we need to do as a football team, that hasn't changed neither. I think um, we've um, put better players on our team in certain areas. That's going to help us be able to run the ball better. Uh, we feel very comfortable that we have two really good runners back there, not just Isaiah, but Duke Johnson as well. Uh, we've, there's a young player that we drafted that we feel very good about as also. So I expect the running game to improve. But I also expect us to improve every part of our, our football team. 
Mm -hmm. Sachi, when you look at this roster, do you feel the need to add a veteran receiver? I know you're awfully, it feels like you're awfully young at that spot. We, we are going to continue to look. You know, right now, bringing in Kenny was big for us in the offseason to get a veteran who's been productive at that position. Um, but we're also going to look for our young guys to step up. In the meantime, if there are opportunities out there uh, to add a receiver and it makes sense for the club, we'll do that. Uh, and we'll continue to talk through that with the coach and staff. Uh, we're not panicked at the position. We think we have a lot of young guys. We've got some great coaches, and a lot of guys have taken big steps. We saw that in the spring. Um, but until we're you know, as productive as we want to be and we were far away from that last year at that position, we'll continue to try to improve it. And how much different do you think it'll be with just the one cut from what, 90 to 53? Uh, how do you think that'll affect your whole training camp process, especially that last weekend? Yeah, you know, I think it's going to be a pretty jammed cut weekend. Um, but we don't really know what to expect. So none of us have, have cut that many players at one time. Um, that'll be a long day. I think Hugh and I, you know, have – great relationships with all 90 guys in our building so we take the time to meet with every one of them uh, I do think it makes it a little bit more challenging for the teams to to try to do that in one one cut um, but we'll be prepared and ready to go as we always are Debut the first preseason game is August 10th so not much time with you know the quarterback competition looking like it's, it's really close right now do you think you need preseason action this year to, to determine who your starter is going to be? Uh, we'll see. I think you guys kind of know how I am. I like to have a quarterback hopefully named by then, but I'm not going to force it. I think what's important is to feel good about the guy that we stick out there. Um, so we're not going to be in a rush. You know, I think obviously we want guys to play in games and play together and play as a unit and do all those things. But uh, if it happens before then, great. If it doesn't, that's okay too. But by the time we get ready to play in a regular season, we'll, ha we'll have the right guy out there playing. You mentioned that, uh, that Miles is ready to go. Mm -hmm. Is he another one of those guys that, you know, last time we saw him, he was going down with a lateral foot, foot sprain. Is he another one of those guys that you're going to have to kind of back off a little tiny bit in camp? And what did you think of him leg pressing, you know, a, a, a friend? <laughs> <laughs> well, well I was, he was strong enough to leg press that friend. But no, we will definitely monitor him. Uh, but I think he's totally healthy. Uh, maybe hasn't done all the conditioning that you would like to see right before training camp. But I think he's uh, up to speed and ready to go. And um, he's looking forward to it. Sasha, you've got, uh, I was just thinking as a GM, you've got to try to figure out who's going to be a quarterback down the line. So you got a rookie. And then you've got, so I guess, how do you, from the front office point of view, how do you look at your, your quarterback situation and trying to figure out what's going to be the QB quarterback of the future if you've got to go get one? Yeah, I think for us, you know, it's about, as Hugh said, taking it step by step. And we certainly try to forecast, but we also discipline ourselves to make sure that we really give these guys the opportunity to develop, work with Hugh, work with David, uh, who are two great coaches and are going to position them well. And there's a lot that we'll learn about each of the four guys in our quarterback room, you know, this, this summer and uh, certainly through the preseason before we have to make a decision. And then we'll evaluate them over the regular season as well. Uh, you know, whether all four make our team or there's, there's fewer than that. Uh, and we'll make, you know, sure that we're in great communication with the coaches as we always are through the process and just looking ahead, but also uh, not rushing into decisions, Terry. That's how we make it. Last year, uh, circumstance forced Cody to find the field with the injuries to, to Josh and, and RG3. But how do, you, how do you know when a rookie quarterback is ready to play. You know, I, I think there's a lot of things you take into account. You know, as I mentioned earlier, there's data that gives you a little direction. There's experience. You know, I've been fortunate to, in this division, to bring a couple guys along who are rookies, you know, and know how they play and how your team functions and plays around them. So we'll, we'll use anything and everything we have to, to make the best decision, you know, when that time comes. Does he have a legitimate shot to be the starter opening day? Yes, he does. I mean, he's here competing. And um, Brock, you know, did a good job in OTAs and our offseason program. And he's going to walk out there and compete just like the other guys. Sashi, regarding Brock, did he change your mind at all since he's been here um, about what he can do and the possibility of him kind of sticking around? I think he probably reaffirmed what we, what we thought. We knew he was a guy who was going to come in and bring some experience to that room. Uh, he's not the most experienced. He's still young. 
Uh, but he certainly has more experience than Deshaun, Kevin, and, and, and Cody in that room, and that's valuable to us. But also, Brock's a competitive guy. He's done a nice job since he's gotten here and really dug into the playbook and, and really endeared himself to his teammates. So, again, all four of the guys have an opportunity, and we look forward to seeing him out there. Hey, when, you were, when you were in Cincinnati, you had, you had Dalton. You knew he was going to be your guy. So my question is, when you have to divide reps here in mm -hmm. practice, that's – what kind of detriment is that to the guy who's going to end up being the, being the star? He's not going to get the number, number of snaps. Like, like but I, I think you adjust as you go, though. You know, as you start to see guys start to distance themselves, you start to move in a different direction. I think that's what, what was asked earlier. You know, if things, how will, it, how will it all turn out? I mean, I can't tell you exactly how fast it's going to happen, but I think we all know, you know, that old saying, Cree's, cream kind of rises to the top. So they will start to separate themselves as we go. And as that happens, we'll make that decision and make sure that that guy gets enough reps to be ready to play. Uh, no, I mean, obviously, there's competition everywhere, and uh, you just said it. I mean, we really want to watch our tight end position and watch those guys continue to get better. Some young players, some young emerging players there, and want to watch them continue to grow. As Sashi mentioned earlier, our young receivers. So I think that would be a great competition among those young men, uh, some of the younger DBs that need to really step up and start to play in our secondary. Um, watching the competition between our defensive line and our offensive line. So it's really our football team. When I think through it, um, there's not one in particular. Obviously, the major one is the quarterback position. But when you really look at it, I mean, we have so many, so many new players and talented players on our roster that it's going to be a really fun camp. Tashi, would, it, would it go against your philosophy to keep a $16 million quarterback on the roster if he's not the starter? No. Where, 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 how do you find to uh, how do you find these uh, peppers? Every which way I can. <laughs> well, I, I mean, it's, it's a nice answer back, but mm -hmm. you're taking a guy as a rookie and you say every which way I can. Well, how much can he handle? Yeah. Yeah, he's very, smart? very smart. He's very smart. First of all, um, I, obviously he's been a sensational defense defensive addition for us. Uh, very talented back there, still growing. There's some things he's still got to learn, but we all know that he's had some skill on the offensive side of the ball. And I don't see any reason why we would stop him from doing something that he may be very good at. I'm, Say, I guess I'll try this again. Okay. Uh, playing safety for mm -hmm. you guys as opposed to, it looked like there's a lot of linebacker and up on the line of scrimmage at Michigan. How much of a difference is that going to be for him? Well, it's not because in Greg's system, you know, we kind of deploy guys in a lot of different areas. Um, he'll do some of the similar things he did at Michigan. He'll do some new things for us, uh, being back there deep and playing in center field. Um, so I don't, I don't see a real difference for him uh, from a defensive standpoint at all. Um, you know, Brock's on our team. Uh, we, we want to evaluate guys based on their performance. You know, no team in the salary cap era can just be blind to, you know, contracts. So I'm not saying it facetiously, but uh, in all seriousness, uh, we acquired Brock. We understood he was going to have a chance to come in and establish himself as a starter. Doesn't mean he had to be the starter for him to be on our roster, and it's that simple. Hey, you, um, I think the first time we talked to Greg, he said, we'll tackle every day. He was talking about training camp. Um, when there's pads. Right, <laughs> but I mean, will, it be a more, will you do more tackling this year than you did last year? Well, there will still be a siren that goes off. So, oh, yeah. So we'll, we'll get after it that way. I, I truly believe that's the only way you really learn how to play football is you have to do the things that football requires, which is blocking and tackling and doing those things. So we'll tackle. Uh, there's no question about that. Now, we'll do it all within a controlled uh, environment uh, to give our players the best chance to compete that way. We're not going to get into projecting any rosters, you know, here today. As I said earlier, we'll take it, you know, day by day, week by week, uh, and make the cuts when it's time to do that. Did you notice a big jump in um, Deshaun after he went out and spent some time with Tom House in, you know, in the during the break, and also maybe the same thing with, with Cody when they came back? Well, as you know, Tom does a great job with all quarterbacks. There's so many guys that go out to see him 
uh, that he works with. I think it was an opportunity for those guys to continue to further themselves because they couldn't be around us as coaches. Uh, but I haven't had them you know, on a field myself personally yet. So I'm looking forward to seeing exactly where they are from the field work uh, once we start practice tomorrow. How much time it take for the offensive line to get some reps on the field together? The O line guys, Joe Thomas, Antonio, they weren't out much in the spring. But how important are these first few weeks to get them all together? I, I think it's important. I think it's going to be important for that group at some point to play together um, and to to have that kind of communication with each other and know how, how they play off for each other. Uh, but I think we'll do all that in time. Have you handicapped it, at least in your mind, that right tackle spot? So Not yet. Not yet. I think it's going to be a tremendous competition. And that's, that's the fun part about training camp. You know, um, I think uh, it brings out the best in players. So who, will be your first who will be your first safeties out there on, uh, tomorrow? Uh, I think um, Derek Kendrick would definitely be out there. And I think, um, you know, it could be a toss up between Peppers and, and it could be a lot of different people. Let me put it to you like that. Uh, I say that for this reason. I think when you look at those guys, and Greg has so many different packages that yeah. he plays in, it's not about a starter. It's not about who walks out there first. I mean, it's kind of who I put out there on offense first because they're going to match what we do. So I think it's unfair if I say, well, this guy's going to be a starter, and then all of a sudden we're in a different package, and you guys start writing and saying, well, that guy wasn't out there first. I don't, I don't think that's the right thing to do. And I think you and his staff, I mean, really have done a nice job making sure that we understand our players well and deploy them to their strengths. Mm -hmm. And all five, six of the guys that we have in that safety room bring different strengths to the table, and they'll put them in position where they can be successful, impact the game most effectively. Uh, so as, as Hugh said, you may see Ed Reynolds out there. You may see Derek Kindred. Uh, that may be more situational than it should be an indictment on uh, anybody who's not out there with, uh, with the starting lineup. Mm -hmm. Draft class of last year, not this year. Which of the guys do you are you looking forward to seeing? Maybe you could, from what you've seen in minicamp, it's one could take a uh, significant jump forward. Yeah, I think obviously Corey. You know, being able to stay healthy and and playing. Um, you know, he shows some some of the explosiveness that caused us to draft him, and he wants to do that on a more consistent basis. Emmanuel had a good rookie season, and I think with a uh, further improved defensive front. Uh, he's going to be helped uh, with Miles' presence and, and some of the other players. Desmond being back as well will help us. Excited about that that front group. Um, but, uh, you know, we're really looking at all the guys. We, we really try not to handicap or project. Uh, we really want to allow the, the development of our players come to us. Hugh and his guys have a very active hand and uh, position those players that have opportunities out here at practice. And so we look forward to seeing them on uh, here at practice and then reviewing the film together to, uh, you know, look look to see who really is coming along and, and understanding that we have a full month. You know, it's easy to get excited, uh, you know, in the first couple practices, but it really is something for us that we want to know the guys that can sustain over 16 weeks of a regular season and into the postseason for us. Uh, so, so we're patient uh, and methodical with our evaluation process. And the key thing I think for us is we got a great coaching staff that's going to be able to develop these guys. You know, you talked about earlier about understanding where you've been. You know, what did you learn from last season? Uh, what we learned is that uh, if you continue to work hard, it gives you the best opportunity. That means you're going to win. It just means it gives you an opportunity. Mm -hmm. But now we feel that we're a, we have a better roster. We have better players in certain positions. Uh, I feel like we've made a huge jumps and strides on defense. Uh, I think we're making huge strides on offense. And now we got to go try to take this to the next level. No, I think camp is about, you know, having the guys that we are projecting to play there to see if they can do it at a high level. But as we said earlier, it's also about competition and improving and uh, getting this team better.